Hi guys and welcome to the channel. If you're meeting me for the first time, my name is Daniel. We're going to be checking out this particular video that is titled What Trump Victory Means to the UK and a whole lot of speculation have been coming up and also memory after Donald Trump won the 47th president's election in the US. So this is what we're going to be checking out. Don't go anywhere. Like, subscribe and also share this video to your friends and your lovers. Without further ado, let's dive into the video. The video was brought to you by Ground News. Following a historically unpredictable election, former President Donald Trump will, once again, move into the White House and become the 47th President of the United States. While Trump has been president before, and usually this will provide us with some kind of idea of how his next term will play out, his unpredictable nature means that the next few months are going to be even harder than ever to predict. That makes things tricky on this side of the pond, as the new Labour government will be desperately trying to work out how they can maintain the so-called special relationship with a man that stands for virtually everything they stand against. So in this video, we're going to go through the work that the Labour government has already been putting in to try and build bridges with the president-elect, before moving on and having a look at what exactly this means for both the British government and the UK as a whole. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Now, it's fair to say that Labour and Donald Trump don't have that much in common. In fact, the current Foreign Secretary, David Lammy, is in a bit of hot water this week, as some of his old tweets about the president-elect have resurfaced. In them, Lamy is shown to have described Trump as a racist KKK and Nazi sympathizer, and a liar and a coward for cancelling a visit to a US war cemetery in France to mark Armistice Day. Given that it will primarily be Lamy's job to maintain the UK's relationship with the US, this isn't exactly the best start. Presumably anticipating this problem though, both Starmer and Lamy met with Trump a few weeks ago in order to try and establish something of a diplomatic relationship. It seems that this meeting went well too, with Trump sources claiming that it was taken as a good gesture. However, there are recent reports that Trump has been privately critical of Starmer as very left-wing, and has echoed some of Elon Musk's strong criticism about Starmer and his government. In fact, the presence of Trump superfan Elon Musk in Trump's governing circle could prove problematic for the Trump-Starmer relationship, given that Musk has fully jumped into the online debates about the state of the UK. Similarly, Trump's warm relationship with Reform UK leader and political opponent of Starmer, Nigel Farage, could create some hiccups. It's not all about personality, though. Policy will play an important role, too. It's the economic sphere that the UK will perhaps feel the biggest impact of the incoming Trump presidency. As part of the unorthodox economic agenda that Trump has set out, he's floated implementing a 60% tariff on Chinese goods and a flat tariff of up to 20% on imports from the rest of the world. According to analysis by the National Institute of Economic and Social Research, the UK could be one of the worst hit countries by Trump's tariff policies and potential subsequent trade war. With the think tank estimating that over two years, the UK's inflation rate would be three to four points higher, while interest rates would be two to three points higher. Additionally, the UK's growth is projected to be lowered by 0.7 percentage points and 0.5 percentage points in just the first two years. Although, according to Labour's Trade Secretary, Jonathan Reynolds, Trump's tariff plans are something that the UK government has been preparing for. Nevertheless, Trump evidently could prove a hurdle to Starmer's core mission for economic growth. Trump's potential trade war with China actually touches on the next area of potential UK-US friction that we're going to discuss, a difference in China policy. The Labour government, having launched a fresh review of the UK-China relationship, is seeking to take a pragmatic approach to China, one that acknowledges and confronts its differences with Beijing, but also regularly engages and works together over key global issues. On top of this, Jonathan Reynolds says that he's open to reviving the trade dialogue with China, now, this could put the UK in an awkward collision course with the Trump White House, as it hardens its rhetoric on China and may look to pressure allies into taking a more hawkish position too. Now, while Keir Starmer and David Lammy have reiterated their belief in maintaining the so-called special relationship with the US and working constructively with Donald Trump, despite their differences, a new Trump administration could end up pushing the UK closer to the EU if Starmer takes the opportunity. Trump's victory has evidently spooked European leaders because of his past comments on NATO and Russia and vindicated those who have urged Europe to free itself from its security reliance on the US and develop its own strategic autonomy. 
The return of Trump therefore presents an opportunity for Europe, as we explained in our recent TLDR EU video, and therefore opens the door for the UK to take a more leading role in building a new European security apparatus. This would come at a financial cost, though, meaning that the UK and its European allies would face pressure to crank up defence spending, especially if Trump does outright quit NATO, or if he scaled back US support for Ukraine. What's more, Trump's attitude towards the environment could also push the UK even closer to Europe. During his first term, Trump pulled the US out of the Paris Climate Agreement, which committed signatories to reduce their carbon emissions to net zero by 2050. Now, this obviously runs counter to the Labour government's plans. Upon being elected Prime Minister, Starmer used his first speech at the UN General Assembly to reiterate that his government would be a global leader on the environment. How possible this would be while trying to cozy up with a man who's described climate change as a big hoax is certainly questionable. Additionally, while Biden rejoined the Paris Climate Agreement on the first day of his presidency, there's a real possibility that Trump could, for the second time, pull the US out of it. According to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, such a move could cripple global climate cooperation. As a result, a UK seeking international cooperation on climate change will have to look elsewhere than a Trump-led US for a constructive partner. Ultimately, Trump's return is just the latest shake-up of an already turbulent international picture. Take the G7 group of advanced economies, for example. It's quite likely that within just a few years, Starmer ends up as the only left-of-centre leader in a notably right-wing G7, with Trump heading up the US and Georgia Maloney in Italy, and likely incoming conservative governments in Germany and Canada, and also possibly France. So while Trump may prove to be the most erratic international partner, Starmer will need to get used to working constructively with those from different political camps if he's going to be successful. Now, these stories about the US election and the impact of Trump aren't likely to go away anytime soon. As the international effect of Trump begins to emerge, the impact of a Trump presidency is only going to become a larger and larger issue. When it comes to following that chaos, though, thankfully, there's Ground News, a website and app developed by a former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news. They pull in articles from all over the world and organize them by story. And every story comes with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality, and ownership of all of the sources reporting, all backed up by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. For instance, take this story about the Harris campaign ending with about $20 million of debt, despite raising a billion dollars during the campaign. It's been reported on by 22 outlets. 91% of those landing on the right and 9% in the center, but literally no coverage from the left, meaning that it's likely a story that those on the left missed entirely. The framing also differs significantly too, with the more centrist outlets claiming that the debt resulted from the necessary high-cost strategies to compete against Trump's established base and messaging, while those on the right used it as evidence of poor financial management and misallocation of resources. They also have a special election page to help you follow along with the breaking news. You can also read specific stories for each candidate, including the major platform issues and even blind spots, stories underreported by one side of the political spectrum or the other. Ground News is such a useful tool for our current media landscape, and I can't recommend it enough. I know I've personally benefited enormously from Ground News. I've gotten better at spotting political bias, and I've surprisingly challenged some of my own. Exactly what I'm talking about. Like, for the UK, they never wanted Donald Trump to win, and all their expectation was... Um, Kalama should just win the election, but it kind of came out that uh, G Trump actually uh, won the opponent, and people were actually just murmuring all over the internet space, even on um, TikTok, Twitter, and also different social media space that they don't want uh, Donald Trump to win, and that it was. Uh, um, however, I will put it right now that this particular election was being doomed and they actually gave all their votes and it wasn't what they were expecting because the UK guys were expecting more of the votes that they saw and a whole lot of people were not happy or agree with the election results but all things, things said and done, 
Donald J. Trump is still 47th president of the United States of America, either you like it or not. So let's say your own thoughts and view relating to this particular one in the comment section. I will write to this particular video or write and privileges belongs to the writing content creator of this great piece of art with an intent to infringe on copyrighted materials. So guys, see you in the next one. Where to stay food, stay safe and stay subscribed. From me to you, it's a bye for now. Do America think black people can be racist? This is what we're going to be checking out in the subsequent video. Don't go anywhere. Like, also share and also subscribe to this channel so that you cannot miss out on any upload. So without further ado, let's move it.